Hi everyone. I'm delighted to be presenting a little bit my research and specifically the role of sea ice on the carbon cycle in the Arctic Ocean. And to do so, I'm using a one gene Malcolm model. First, let's try to wonder a little bit about what is sea ice. Um, sea ice is not your typical ice cube, right? It's a bit more complex than that. And if I were to take an analogy, I'd say that it's fairly similar to the stairwell in the oceanographic building on a rainy day. It's uh, slippery, it's wet, but what I'm really trying to point out is that it's porous. Water can flow through sea ice. And so what you can see here on this image of sea ice is um, pockets and, and channels uh, stored inside the crystal matrix. And those pockets can store uh, brine, therefore salt and carbon in the form of alkalinity and reaction. Due to some chemical and biological processes, uh, the alkalinity to DAC ratio inside the sea ice is different from the one in the underlying water, and that has consequences on the PCO. Now, most of the uh, climate models consider that sea ice is pure fresh water, so they do not represent storage of carbon in sea ice. And the obvious question is, is that a big deal, right? So try to answer this question. We can use a classic numerical model. What you see here um, is the sea ice concentration at the top. And as a background color, the freezing melting rate. So green say, means that the ice is melting. The dashed black line is the atmospheric PCO2. It's a forcing. And the red line is the surface water PCO2. And so that's the output of my 1D model. In this configuration, ice is pure fresh water. So this model is similar to a classic ocean model. Building on that, I can parameterize the storage of carbon in sea ice and uh, look at its impact on the PCO2 signal cycle. And the obvious feature that uh, strikes us here is that the uh, uh, signal cycle is amplified. We have higher values in winter and lower values in summer. What does that mean in terms of uh, RC flux? Well, if you look at the RC flux, you know it's, it's a function of the difference between the atmospheric and the water PCO2 but it's also a function of how much water, open water there is, right? It's one minus the ice concentration. And so in winter, when the PCO2 in the water is higher than in a standard run, the ice concentration is also at its highest. So it means there's no potential exchange between the ocean and the atmosphere. On the contrary, in summer, when the PCO2 is lower than the classic, the standard run, that's also when the ice is broken and, and when we have um, in, an interface between the ocean and the atmosphere. And so that's when uptake is possible. And so the net impact of parameterizing the carbon storage in the sea ice over a signal cycle is that it will increase the oceanic CO2 uptake. Now you can notice that this is a function of the freezing melting rate and the ice concentration. So it's a function of the ice conditions. And those are highly specially viable. If you look at those two maps of, uh, of the Arctic on the left hand side, you have the uh, yearly ice melt. So excluding any freezing. And on the right hand side, you have the temporal integral of the ice concentration. In the central Arctic Ocean, um, those light blue dots uh, means that the uh, water is nearly fully covered all year round. We have values close to 365. What I want you to notice is that on the uh, edge of the ice zone, so in the Labrador Sea and the Greenland Sea, we have, in the, we have a very high values of ice melts, up to seven meters, right? So it's, it's very high values. And that, is, uh, that makes sense because the ice is advicted through these Greenland current and the Labrador current towards warmer conditions where it can melt. Um, each of the dots you can see here is a grid cell on which I've run my model uh, over six years. And so I've been able then to, do, to look a little bit more at um, how it behaves basically. And so what you see here on this plot is that the x-axis is the ice melt. So that's the same variable as on the left panel from the previous slide. The y-axis, is the difference in the RC CO2 flux between a run where I parameterize the carbon storage in CS and another run, which is standard, so ice is pure, pure fresh water. So it's the equivalent of the blue line minus the red line, basically. 
And you can see that I, I get this cloud of points, which is very well aligned, right? So we have a strong correlation between the two variables. The R square here is 0.86, which I'm quite proud of, right? It's very high. And so it means we can derive a simple linear regression between the ice melt and the supplementary carbon uptake that is not accounted for in classic numerical models. So to summarize a little bit, um, the storage of carbon in sea ice increases the oceanic uh, carbon uptake. And this uh, increase, the supplementary carbon uptake is a linear function of ice melt. And using that, we can estimate on the other, using other model outputs, how much those models are missing in terms of carbon uptake. Um, and my estimates are it's comprised between 15% and 30%, which is high values. Thank you for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions.